Hello viewers, welcome back to our YouTube channel 3D Parametric Solid Model Drawings. Today we will create an assembly of shock absorber in Autodesk Inventor, which is taken from our suspension assembly. Okay, in this video you will learn the full modeling process of this model and its components. Okay, alright. We have used 13 power files and 4 sub-assemblies to make this assembly. Some pics of this assembly we are showing you at the beginning of this video. Okay, that's it. So, let's start. Now, I will choose inch power file here. Okay. Now select the, the 2D sketch command and so first I will start a sketch on XY plane. Now start a circle from the center point and its diameter will keep 0 0.5 to 5 inches. Ok, finish the sketch. Now choose isometric view from here. I will choose execute command. Ok, it will automatically select the circle. Fix the execute distance value 0 0.075 inches. Ok, now see here. Now go to the appearance panel and we will select the popular color on here. Ok, that's it. It looks great. Save the file with the name shock spring adjustment nut. Let's start the sketch over the front face. Ok, create a polygon from the center point. Now I will apply vertical constraint on this line. Ok. Then I will activate the dimension tool from here. Fix the dimension 0.625 inches between these two diagonal lines. Ok, finish the sketch. Now rotate the model in isometric view. Activate the extrude command. And fix the distance value 0.125 inches. Ok, now see here. Activate the extrude command. And start the sketch over the rear side of the base feature. Now draw a circle from here. The diameter of this circle 0.5 inches. Ok, finish the sketch. And now we will cut this circle through all the body. Ok, that's it. 
now select this edge ok and activate the fillet command enter the fillet radius 0 0.05 inches and apply the fillet over all edges of the part like this Now activate the fillet command once again. And apply the fillets over all the polygonal inner and outer edges of the part like this. The fillet radius will keep 0 0.015 inches. Ok, alright, now my part has been completed on here, so we will close the part file. Next we will create a spring which is later fitted on the shock absorber assembly. Create another new inch power file. Ok. Let's start the sketch over the XY plane. Ok, choose the front view. Now we will draw a vertical line on here and fix the coincident constraint between the midpoint of this line and part origin. And its length will keep 1 inches. Ok, alright. Now we will convert this line into center line. Ok, now see. Now we will create two circles in the design window like this, ok. And apply the diameter of this circle, it will keep 0 0.043 inches, ok. And now we will activate the equal constraint command from here, ok. Select these two circles, ok. Now see. And fix the vertical constraint between these two center point of the circles. Ok, that's it. Now we will apply the tangent constraint between these two circles. Ok, that's it. Now we will create a two sketch points over this circle like this. And fix the horizontal constraint between, between this point and, and end point of the center line. Ok, now see the result. Now we will apply another horizontal constraint between this point. Ok, and center point of the lower circle ok now we will apply the dimension between this point and center line its diameter dimension will keep 0.55 inches ok now my sketch is fully constrained on here so we will exit from the sketching environment rotate the model in isometric view now we will activate the coil tool from here Ok, and select the top circle from the design window. Ok, now we will choose the access option on here and select this center line for coil access. Now we will select flip side button. Ok, next select the reverse direction button from here. Now go to the coil size tab. Select the revolution and height option under the type list. Fix the height 1 inches and the revolution value will keep 5. Now we will go to the coil ends tab. 
starting and ending point of the spring will keep flat. Fix the transition angle values will keep 30 degrees on the both the columns. Fix the flat angle values will keep 1 degree on both the columns. And click OK to create the coil feature. Now you can see in the design window my first coil feature is created on here. Save the file with the name suspension spring. Click save. OK that's it. Now we will open the visibility of the base sketch. Now we will activate the coil tool once again. Select the top circle. Choose the Y axis for creating the coil axis. Okay. Fix the pitch value D1 plus 0.001 inches. The revolution value will keep 2 and click OK. Now see. Let's start the sketch over the XY plane. And now activate the project cut edges command from here. Switch on the slice graphics command. Now we draw a rectangle on here. Fix the tangent constraint between this line and this projected curve. Okay, that's it. Finish the sketch. Now we will cut this coil feature by selecting this rectangle on the both sides from the XY plane by using the extrude command like this. Ok now see my spring surface is flattened on here. It looks great. In the same manner we will create another coil feature over the opposite side of the spring and afterwards we will plane the top surface of the spring in the following way.
ओके और राइट Now we will change the part color from here. Now my spring is looking perfect. The file has been completed, so we will close the part file. Okay, let's go for the next part. Okay, now we will sketch shock body 1.3 length part. All right. At first, we will create the new sketch over the XY plane. Create a circle from the part origin. Its diameter will keep 0.5 inches. Okay, finish the sketch. Now we will extrude the sketch 1 inches from this plane. Okay, alright. Save the part with the name shock body 1.3 length. Now we will activate the shell tool from here and select different face. Fix the wall thickness value 0 0.035 inches and click OK. Now see. Now we will create the fillet over the back edge. Start the new sketch over this face. Now create a circle on this face and fix the diameter 0.375 inches. Okay, finish the sketch. I will choose extrude command and enter the depth value 0.4 inches. Click OK. Let's start the sketch over this face. Rotate the model in this position and take the project of this face. Now we will draw two vertical lines on both sides of the center line. Now choose the construction option from here and take the project of YZ plane. Okay, activate the symmetric constraint command from here and select these two lines and center line to apply the constraint. Okay, that's it. Apply the dimension 0.15 inches between these two vertical lines. I will choose the extrude tool. Okay, now we will select the sketch profiles like this. Now choose the cut option. And select the two option. Okay, we will select this face. Click OK. See, my feature is cut on here. Now we will create the sketch over the side face. Take the project of Z-axis and side edge. Okay, create a circle over this line. Its diameter will keep 0.24 inches. Fix the dimension 0.188 inches between the side edge and circle. Okay, finish the sketch. Now we will create a hole by selecting this circle.
apply the chamfer over the whole edge like this. The chamfer distance will keep 0 0.015 inches. Now we will apply the fillets over the side edges like this. Okay, it looks great. Activate the thread tool from here and select the outer cylindrical surface of the model. The thread length will keep 0.75 inches. Now we will go on the specifications tab and select the 1 by 2 dash 20 UNF size under the designation area and click OK. Now see the result. We will apply another thread over the inside hole like this. The thread length will keep 0.375 inches. Thread size will keep 7 by 16 dash 28 UNEF. Okay, alright. Now we will change the color of the model to electric blue. Now my shock body part is looking perfect. This file has been completed, so we will close the part file. Okay, let's go for the next part. Now we will sketch shock cartridge part. Okay. Now select XY plane sketch. Now create a circle from the part origin and fix the diameter 0.5 inches. Okay, finish the sketch. Let me choose the extrude tool. Fix the extrusion value 0.125 inches. And click OK. Now we will change the color of the model as popular, okay. And save the file with the name shock cartridge. Okay, that's it. Now create a new sketch over the front face. Choose front view. Now we will take the project of the outer circular edge, okay. Convert this projected edge into construction geometry. Now we will create a polygon from the center point, okay, alright. And snap the end point of the polygon over the outer circular projected edge. Okay, now we will activate the horizontal constraint from here and select this line. Okay, now see. Now we will select all the polygonal lines from here and convert them into construction geometry. Now we will draw a rectangle over the polygon. And apply tangent constraint between this line and this outer projected curve.
ओके फिनिश द स्केच लेट्स स्टार्ट द एक्सट्यूर कमांड एंड सेलेक्ट द रेक्टेंगल ओके नाउ चूज द कट ऑप्शन एंड सेट द डिस्टेंस वैल्यू पॉइंट वन टू फाइव माइनस पॉइंट जीरो वन फाइव इंचेस Click OK. Now my feature is cut on here. Let me choose the circular pattern tool. And select this extrude cut feature. Now choose the rotation axis option. And we will select the Z axis on here. Occurrence count value will keep 6. And click OK. Now see. Now we will apply the fillets over all edges of the part like this. Start the sketch over the rear side face. Now draw a circle from the center point and its diameter will keep 0.43 inches. Okay, finish the sketch. Now here I will choose the extrude command. Distance value will keep 0.25 inches. Okay, see, now I will create one more sketch over this face. Now choose a circle, here I will create on this point and diameter 0.25 inch. Okay. Okay, finish the sketch. Now choose the cut option, distance will keep 0.29 inches, okay, now see here my hole is created. Now we will activate the hole command, we will select the concentric option from here. Okay, now select the front face and then next we have selected front circular edge for centering the hole. Fix the hole diameter 0.135 inches and click OK. Now see here my second hole is created over this model. OK, now we will start the sketch over exit plane. Now we will activate the slice graphics command from here. OK. and activate the project cut edges command now see here the entire model edges are created at once a time 
and take the project of z axis now we convert this line into center line create some more lines on here something like this and fix the dimension 0 0.05 inches between these two lines apply another dimension on here it will keep 0 0.025 inches set the height of this line it will also keep 0 0.025 inches okay now we will select this center line and this line and apply the diameter dimension 0.375 inches ok finish the sketch let me choose the revolve command from here now select the sketch profile ok and select the center line for the axis of the revolution now we will select the cut option and click ok now see here slot is cut over the cylindrical surface apply the fillet over these two edges of the model now we will activate the thread tool from here we will go on the specifications tab and select the outer cylindrical surface of the model Select the 7 by 16 dash 28 UNEF size under the designation area and click OK. Now the shock cartridge component has been completed. So let's go for the next part. Now we will sketch the O ring part. OK. Now we will activate the torus tool from here. Let's start the sketch on the XY plane. Now start the torus from the part origin and fix the center distance value of torus 0.1875 by 2 inches. The diameter of the torus will keep 0 0.0625 inches. Okay, that's it. Finish the sketch. Rotate the model in isometric view and click OK to finish the command. Now we will change the part color as bronze satin. Okay. It it is looking perfect. Save the file O-ring. Let's go for the next part. Now we will sketch the shock cartridge cover part. Ok. Let's start the sketch on the XY plane. and take the project of YZ and XZ plane now we will convert the horizontal line into construction geometry the vertical line as the center line now we will draw two lines like this
and fix the diameter dimension between this end point of the line and center line. It will keep 0.13 inches. Now we will apply another diameter dimension on here. It will keep 0.41 inches and fix the height of this line 0 0.07 inches. Okay, all right. Create a horizontal line from this point. Its dimension will keep 0 0.025 inches. Now draw the aligned line from this end point. Okay. Now we will create three more lines in the design window like this and connect into the baseline. Okay. Now we will fix the diameter dimension 0.356 inches between this end point of the aligned line and center line. Now select this line and center line and fix the dimension 0.375 inches. Give the dimension 0 0.020 inches on this line. My sketch is fully constrained on here. Exit from the sketch. Okay, activate the revolve command and select this sketch region. Okay, all right. Save the file with the name shock cartridge cover. Now we will change the color of the part as blue gray. Okay. Now go to the view tab and, and activate the setting light option. And now we will import the custom favorite color from here which we have already maintained on here. Okay. Now we will add one more light on here and adjust the brightness of the light like this. And click OK. Oh, see, it looks great. Activate the fillet command, OK, and apply the fillet over the outer edge. Set the radius 0 0.015 inches, OK. Now we will apply another fillet on the selected edges of the part and its radius will keep 0 0.005 inches. Okay, that's it. Close the file. Let's go for the next part. Now we will sketch the shock cartridge spacer part. Okay, let's start the extrude command and create a sketch on the XY plane. Now draw a circle from the part origin. Its diameter will keep 0.25 inches. Create another circle on here. The diameter will keep 0.135 inches. Now select the sketch region and fix the distance value 0.165 inches. Click OK. Now we will apply the fillets entire edges of the part. And set the radius of the fillet 0 0.005 inches. Save the file with the name shock cartridge spacer.
okay all right now we will change the color of the part it is looking perfect close the file let's go for the next part now we will sketch the 0.25 ball part okay so let's start the sketch on the xy plane and take the project of yz plane convert this line into center line now we will draw a center point arc over this line Create a circle on the center point and its diameter will keep 0.125 inches. Okay, the diameter of this arc it will keep 0.25 inches. Now we will draw a vertical line between the end points of the line to connect the sketch. Ok, activate the revolve command and select this sketch region. Click ok to finish the command. Now we will open the visibility of sketch 1, ok. And now we will select the wireframe option under the visual style area. Ok and activate the extrude command. Now select this circle, select the cut option, choose the all option. and click OK. Now see here my hole is created over this part. Close the part. Let's go for the next part. Now we will sketch the shock shock model like this. Okay, so let's start the sketch on the XY plane. Now draw a circle from the part origin. The diameter will keep 0.125 inches. Ok, finish the sketch. Now we will extrude this circle 1.25 inches on both sides from the XY plane. Now we will change the part color from here. Ok, and save the part with the name Shock Shaft. Ok, alright, start the sketch on the front face. Now create a circle on here, diameter will keep 0.112 inches.
ओके फिनिश द स्केच लेट्स चूज द एक्सट्यूट कमांड एंड सेलेक्ट द स्केच इंटर द डिस्टेंस वैल्यू पॉइंट टू टू फाइव इंचेस एंड क्लिक ओके Now we will activate the plane command from here. Create a plane at an offset distance value minus zero point zero three two inches inside from the back face, and start the sketch on this plane. Take the project of the two front circular edges like this. Okay, now activate the slice graphics command to see here. Okay, finish the sketch. Let's start the extrude command. choose the cut option and distance value will keep 0.015 inches and select this profile click okay now see my slot is cut on this circular face in the same manner we will create another slot on in the following way Now we will apply chamfer on the front and back edge like this. Chamfer distance value will keep 0.015 inches. Now we will activate the thread command and apply this thread. on the front side circular face thread size will keep as your screen and click okay now my shock shot has been completed on here so we will close the bar file let's go for the next part now we will sketch the e click part like this okay let's start the sketch on the xy plane Now draw two circles from the part origin. One diameter will keep point zero nine three seven seven five inches, and the other is point two five inches. Okay, all right. Finish the sketch. Extrude this sketch region 0.15 inches on both sides from the center plane. Let's start the new sketch over the front face.
take the project of this face now we will draw a sketch something like this and convert this circle into construction geometry okay all right Now we will take the project of YZ plane. Activate the symmetric constraint tool from here and select this line, this line and the center line. Okay, now see. Now we will fix the tangent constraint between the top line and outer circle. Now we will apply the dimension on this line 0 0.05 inches and this line dimension will keep 0.1 inches. Fix the angular dimension 25 degrees between these two lines. Ok, finish the sketch. Now we will activate the execute command and select this sketch profile. The boolean operation will keep cut. Ok, alright. Save the file, e clip. Let's start the sketch over the front face. Take the project of outer circular edge. And now we will take the offset inside of the outer circle. The offset distance value will keep 0 0.03 inches. Now we will drag the endpoints of this curve. And take the project of YZ plane. Now we will create two aligned lines on both the ends of the curve like this. Fix the symmetric constraint on these two lines. Now we will extend this curve on this endpoint of the line. Fix the angular dimension 50 degrees on these two lines. In the same manner, we will create two more aligned lines over the opposite side. and fix the angular dimension 50 degrees between both the lines. Now we will apply the symmetric constraint on these two lines by selecting the center line. Fix the dimension 0 0.0832 inches between these two endpoints.
and apply another dimension on these endpoints, it will keep 0 0.039 inches. Okay, finish the sketch. Let's I will choose the extrude command. The boolean operation will keep cut. Now we will select these two sketch profiles. Okay, select through all option and click OK. Now we will apply the fillets over all the corner edges of this part. Okay, it looks great. Now we will change the color of the part as brindle. Let's go for the next part. Now we will sketch the piston part. Okay. So let us activate the extrude command and start the sketch on the XY plane. Now create a circle from the center point. Its diameter will keep 0.125 inches. Now we will create another circle on here. Its diameter will keep 0.43 inches. Okay, finish the sketch. Now we will extrude this sketch region 1 by 32 inches on both sides from the center line. Okay, all right. Change the color of the part as popular. Now we will fix the fillet over these two edges of the part. Okay. Fix the chamfer over the whole edge. Okay, now let me choose the extrude command. Select the front face to start the sketch. Now we draw a circle on here. Its diameter will be 0 0.043 inches. And the center distance will keep off this circle 0.15 inches. Now we will apply the horizontal constraint between these two points.
Okay, finish the sketch. Now we will create a hole by selecting this hole. Okay, let me choose the circular pattern tool. And select this extrude cut feature. Okay, now choose the rotation axis option. And we will select the z axis on here. Occurrence count value will keep 3. And click OK. Now see, my pattern feature has been created on this face. Let's go for the next part. Now we will sketch the spring cup part. Okay. Start the sketch on the XY plane. Now take the project of YZ plane, okay. And convert this line into center line. Now we will draw a vertical line, its length will keep 0 0.05 inches. Okay, and draw two more lines from this end point of the line. Select this endpoint and center line. Okay, its dimension will keep 0.13 inches. Fix another dimension on here, it will keep 0.45 inches. Now we will draw some more lines with the given dimensions in the design window like this. Now select this outer line and center line, ok. Its dimension will keep 0.675 inches. Ok, that's it. Ok, now we will select this line and center line and apply the dimension 0.235 inches. Now we will fix the equal constraint, this line and this line, ok, alright. Now select the collinear constraint tool and apply this constraint between these two lines. Now we will apply another collinear constraint be between bottom lines.
now my sketch is fully constrained on here so we will exit from the sketching mode activate the revolve command from here okay now you can see here my sketch is already selected in the design window so now we will finish the command Change the part from here and save the file with the name Spring Cup. Now rotate the model in, in isometric view. Activate the fillet tool from here. Set the radius of the fillet 0 0.015 inches. And apply the fillets on these three edges of the model like this. Now my model is looking perfect. Now we will create the sketch over the back face of the part. We will activate the wireframe with visible edges only option under the visual style area. Okay, that's it. Now we will activate the project cut edges command and convert all the sketches into construction geometry. Now we will create a horizontal line over the center point. Its length will keep 0 0.063 inches. Draw another line over the outside. Fix the coincident constraint on the center line. Now we will draw the two lines on the both end points of the line to connect the sketch profile. and fix the horizontal constraint between this midpoint of the line and center part origin. Fix the angular dimension 10 degrees between these two lines. Apply the tangent constraint between this line and outer projected curve. Now rotate the model in isometric view. Ok and finish the sketch. Now we will back to the shaded with edges option on here.
we will create a slot by selecting this sketch profile like this. Okay, now see. Now we will apply some more fillets over the model like this. Okay, that's it. Let's go for the next part. This is the final part of my shock absorber assembly. Okay, now we will sketch the ball end part. Okay, so let's start a sketch on the XY plane. Now create a circle from the center point. The diameter will keep 0.4 inches. Finish the sketch. Okay, now we will extrude this circle 0.115 inches on both sides from the XY plane. Now choose XY plane sketch. We will take the project of the entire model by activating the project cut edges command. Choose the slice graphics option. Okay. Let's start the line from the outer curve. Now create another one, okay. Create one more line on here. Now we draw an arc on this endpoint and connect it to this endpoint. Now we will apply some more dimensions here, which as this dimension will keep 0.225 inches. Okay. Now this dimension will also keep the same one. Okay. Fix the horizontal constraint between these two endpoints. Okay, finish the sketch. Now 
Now we will revolve the sketch like this. Ok, alright, and save the file with the name ball end. Let's start the new sketch over the XY plane. Now we will activate the slice graphics command from here. Ok. We will take the project of the entire model by activating the project cut edges command. And convert them into construction geometry. Take the project of the x axis. Okay. Now we will draw the three lines like this by connecting the outer edge of the base feature. Now this dimension will keep 0.1375 inches. Now give the dimension 0.396 inches on these two points. Now select these two lines and center line, ok, and apply the symmetric constraint on here. Now this dimension will keep 0.3154 inches. Convert the outer curve into normal geometry. Ok, finish the sketch. So now we will select the extrude command and extrude it 0.115 inches. Ok, now see the result. Now we will fix the fillets over the four corner edges of the part. The fillet radius will keep 0 0.05 inches. Ok, let's start the split tool from here. First, we have selected the split face option. Now we will select the XY plane which will keep as a splitting plane. And then next, we will select the outer surface of this model. Click OK. Now see my part is divided into faces. So now we will activate the draft tool from here. First we will select the front face, it is our directional face, ok. Now rotate the model in the top view, ok. 
Now we will select the left portion of the model and fix the draft angle value 5 degrees. Ok, now see the result. In the same manner, we will bend the right portion 5 degrees by using this tool. Ok, now see the result. Now we will activate the whole command. Choose the tabbed hole option on here and select the 0.112 hash 4 size. Ok. Hole depth will keep 0.2 to 5 inches. Now choose the concentric option and select the front face. And now we will select this circular edge to define the center point of the hole and click OK. Now see. We will apply some more fillets over the model like this. Okay, that's it. Now we will create one more hole on this face in the following way.
and fix the chamfer on this whole edge. Now we will change the material of the model as lead. My part is looking perfect, so we will close the power file. Finally, all the components of this assembly are finished here. So let's go for the new assembly. Now here, we will design the shock absorber assembly by using the assembly constraints. Okay, that's it. First of all, we will create a standard inch assembly file. Okay. Now we will activate the place component command and place the part ball end in this newly created assembly. Save this assembly with the name ball end assembly. Insert the part file 0.25 ball. OK. Now we will activate the constraint command and apply the mate constraint between XY plane of these two parts. Now see the result. My 0.25 ball part is placed into the center of the ball end part and apply another mate constraint between this cylindrical face and this face. Ok, now my assembly is fully defined. Uh, now we are going to create another new inch assembly file. Ok, place the part shock shaft in the assembly. Ok. Save the assembly with the name it as shock strut assembly. Now we will activate the place component command place the part piston in this assembly. Select this cylindrical face of pin and this cylindrical face of piston and apply axis mate between them. OK. Drag the part from here. Place the part E clip in this assembly. Place another copy of this part. And apply the mid constraint like this. Now select the flush mate, select the 
front face of piston and slot face of of shock shaft and apply flush bit okay now we will place the assembly of ball end apply the mate constraint between face of ball end assembly and this slot face of shaft okay select the cylindrical face of pin and ball end and apply axis mate between them now we will place the part spring cup in this assembly okay that's it now we will activate the constraint command select the back face of spring cup and select the front face of shock shaft and apply the mate constraint okay select this cylindrical face and this cylindrical face and apply axis mate now rotate the model from here and save the assembly now we will create another new inch assembly okay and place the file shock cartridge in this assembly select the place grounded at origin option now see my part is fully defined now we will increase the brightness of this model okay it looks great now we will place the part o-ring in this assembly okay now activate the constraint command and select this axis of o-ring and this cylindrical face of shock cartridge and apply mid constraint okay drag the part from here now go to the filter option in the browse bar and select the model view okay go to the o-ring part and uh, open the visibility of work plane 1 okay and open the visibility of work plane 2 okay now we will activate the constraint command select this plane of o-ring okay select this face of shock cartridge and apply mid constraint okay that's it Now activate the place component command. And place the shock cartridge spacer in this assembly. Okay. Activate the constraint command. Select this cylindrical face of shock cartridge spacer. And this cylindrical face of shock cartridge. Okay. And apply mate constraint between them. Drag the shock cartridge spacer from here. Now go to the view tab. And activate the half section view from here okay select the YZ plane okay now see the result activate the constraint command and select this plane okay and select this face okay now see the result now close the visibility of these planes Go to the browse bar and choose assembly view option. Now 
now we will save this assembly with the name shock cartridge assembly okay that's it now we will place the part shock cartridge cover in this assembly okay all right create another copy of o ring part and apply the mid constraint between this axis of o ring and this axis of shock cartridge okay choose model view option and activate the constraint command now select the work plane 1 of the o ring and choose front view rotate the model in this position and select this face of shock cartridge spacer and apply the mate constraint okay that's it now we will activate the constraint command and select the whole axis of shock cartridge cover and select the outer cylindrical face of the shock cartridge and apply the axis mate between them rotate the shock cartridge cover in this position select this face and the inside face of the part and apply the mate constraint between them okay that's it Now go to the shock cartridge space part and change the color of this part as brindle. Okay. Go back in the assembly mode. Save the assembly and choose end section view button. Now we will create another new inch assembly from here. And place the part file shock body 1.3 length in the assembly. Ok, that's it. Now we will activate the insert component command and insert the shock cartridge assembly from here. And select the cylindrical face of shock body length and shock cartridge assembly and apply mate constraint between them. Ok, that's it. Drag the assembly from here activate the constraint command select this face of shock body length and this face of shock cartridge and apply mate constraint now select the angle mate from here select this face of shock body length and this face of shock cartridge assembly in the solution area select the directed angle option and apply angle mate between them okay now see my shock cartridge assembly is fully defined Save this assembly with the name shock body. Ok, alright. Now we will create a new inch assembly from here. And place the power file shock spring adjustment nut in the assembly. Ok, rotate the model in this position. Now we will increase the brightness of the model from here. It looks good. C 
save the file with the name shock absorber assembly. Okay, that's it. Now we will place the PAR file suspension spring in this assembly. Okay, alright. Now activate the free rotate command. Select this spring and rotate the part in this position. Choose the isometric view. Now we will activate the constraint command. Select the cylindrical face of adjustment nut and select y axis of the spring and apply axis mate between them. Now see the result. Save the assembly. Now we will place the shock body assembly file in this shock absorber assembly. Okay, that's it. Now rotate the shock body assembly in this position by using free rotate command. Okay, alright. Now we will activate the constraint command. Select the whole face of shock spring adjustment nut and select the outer cylindrical face of the shock body assembly and apply mate constraint between them. Now see the result. Now choose the flush mate from here and select the front face of shock body assembly and shock spring adjustment nut and apply the flush mate between them. The offset distance value between these two assemblies, it will keep minus 0.4003 inches. Ok, that's it. Now we will activate the constraint command and choose the angle mate. Choose directed angle option from here and select these two faces of the assemblies. Ok, now see the result. Now my assembly is fully defined and save the assembly. Now we will place the assembly shock strut in this assembly. Rotate this assembly something look like this. Ok, alright. Activate the constraint command and select the rod of shock strut assembly. Select the cylindrical face of shock body assembly. Ok, and apply the mate constraint between them. Drag the assembly from here. Apply the mate constraint between the face of spring and the back face of shock strut assembly. Ok, that's it. Now we will give the angle mate between this face and this face, ok. Now my shock absorber assembly has been completed here. I hope you will enjoy this video. If you may like this video, please like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Please share this video with your friends and colleagues. Okay friends, goodbye.